What's up, Legends, and welcome back to the last First Impressions video of the Hell's Kitchen Marvel Unmatched set. I have already posted the Bullseye and Electra videos at this point, even though I'm recording them back to back to back. Uh, just a reminder, if you're watching these all in one sitting, let, let's have some water now together. Hydrate, homies. So, um, <laughs> what a way to start this video. I will be giving my first impressions of Daredevil today. And like I said with Elektra, I have played Bullseye way more than the other two characters in this set. So um, <laughs> we're, uh, we're going off of just only a few plays for Daredevil and Elektra. And I don't think I've said this up until this point today, but uh, I very well could be wrong about all of this stuff. This is just my first impressions of looking at these characters' decks, playing around with them a couple times, or in the case of Bullseye, 30 times. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're just like analyzing this stuff after its release, talking about it after a few plays, and how good I think each card and the decks will be. Uh, so let's just get right into Daredevil. Let's start with the card back. Uh, like I said, all the Hell's Kitchen card backs have to do with like eyes in the middle. Uh, as you can see, there's just an X in what looks like like a sonar radar type thing, uh, because Daredevil is of course blind, and uh, despite that, he's able to do some wonderful things i have seen the first season of the daredevil netflix show as well as the uh daredevil ben affleck movie so i'm a little bit well versed in a little bit more well versed in this character than the other two although uh i think colin farrell's bullseye was in the daredevil ben affleck movie and so is jennifer gardner's electra just uh the lore behind those characters for me is a little bit less certain than daredevil uh i've seen his origin story twice now in the different media outlets and uh his thing is that he's tough and he's hard to take down he has unlimited superhuman endurance as well as just amazing acrobatic abilities and he's a good guy <laughs> he's a really good lawyer uh so let's take a look at his stats he's melee and has 17 health is a solo hero of course and his move three that's important because i think he's a lot better at move three than he would be at move two um generally a lot of characters are but uh like electra and bullseye didn't need to be move three i think daredevil kind of does 17 health pretty beefy and he's got healing so uh he will be hard to take down his ability says during combat if you have two or fewer cards in hand so two one or zero you may blind boost your attack or defense now you can't blind boost a defense if you don't play a card similar you can't blind boost an attack if you don't play in a card so if you have zero cards in hand and your opponent attacks you you can't blind boost it but uh, if you play a card you get the during combat ability to blind boost it which could be pretty good at value blocking or just adding on a little bit more damage to an attack you have a lot of twos in this deck so that's kind of what you'll be expecting when you blind boost although you have a couple threes and a couple ones so there is a little bit of room for variance and it says if you have other during combat effects choose the order at which they resolve which uh, i only think really matters for like one or two other cards but uh we'll see so Let's talk about uh, one more thing before we get into the cards. His deck is different. Like Electra's, there's less than 30 cards in it. Daredevil has eight unique cards, which is crazy low. Um, in theory, he should be very consistent in terms of like card effects and things, because there's not a lot going on in this deck. It's just a few refined cards, which I'm very interested to see how this plays out. Uh, Electra had 10. Uh, the previous minimum was 11, I think, but eight we're now pushing uh new lows and he only has 22 total cards uh electra had 20 so uh daredevil has uh less cards and less unique cards so i'm very interested to see how this plays out um and in addition to blind boosting a lot if you're at a low hand count uh, he can churn through his deck very quickly and reach exhaustion which he has ways of mitigating so he is all about playing at the brink of exhaustion and just like not quite exhausting yet um, he has some really cool recursion effects which we'll talk about and i guess while we're on the subject i don't know if you actually want to be actively playing in order to use this ability because blind boosting a lot that you're just subject to variance you could discard or you could 
blind boost. You can end up discarding by blind boosting some of your best cards away. And even though you have recursion effects, it can just make it a little bit more difficult to get them back. And like we see with Bloody Mary, when she plays at a low hand count, she's kind of, you're playing at the whim of like what cards you want to draw and because you're playing with less of them you have less options so you're subject to more variance whereas a character that plays at like five six or seven cards in hand you are less punished by just a couple bad draws in a row because you have other cards in your hand to make up for bad draws and uh you just have more options when you're playing at a high hand count. So this might be a character where the ability comes into effect maybe only once or twice per game if you're not really actively going for it. In my games as Daredevil, uh, I was playing against Electra, and like I said in her video, when she resurrects, if you have a low hand count, you are screwed. So I was basically keeping a full hand count the whole game. So I didn't really get to experiment what, what happened if I played with the Bloody Mary three cards in hand the whole game and just saw what happened but uh, against some characters where you want to just pound the damage home that might be the case um the problem is your deck doesn't have card draw so like if you had evade in this deck i could see you playing at a lower hand count because you'd be able to maintain it if you get double attacked right now if you only have two cards in your hand sure you can blind boost them but unless you can block with both of them You'll take a hit undefended, and I'm just not sure it's worth the risk necessarily. So, uh, interesting ability. You might just use it to get to exhaustion faster, because as we'll see, you have a card that will trigger when your deck is empty. But uh, other than intentionally wanting to do that, I think you might just want to actually just buy into the exhaustion game, not blind boost at all if you can, and use your recursion effects to just keep your deck going infinitely because you do have a way to go infinite which uh, would be really cool to pull off especially against characters without feints so let's just get into the the deck i know we could postulate on like the ability and how to use it and certain things like that all day i'll try to keep this video under 30 minutes uh, the videos i made for the redemption row set were a lot longer than i thought they were going to be i was like all right i'm going to sit down i'm going to talk to myself for 10 minutes <laughs> 10 minutes each for each video and then they ended up being like 30 minutes each so uh, i think these videos are a little bit shorter they're closer to like 20 25 minutes we'll try to keep this on the shorter end i realize as i'm talking about this right now it's just making the video longer um, so let's just go <laughs> the first card is man without fear um, because fear can be overcome if you have the will daredevil not scared of anything uh, unlike me i am scared of <laughs> zero skaters invisible man but I am bottom one, so we don't have to worry about that for right now. This is a two-value attack. Hmm. It does have a boost value of three. It's one of your two cards that has that. And it says, during combat, you may blind boost this attack. This is in addition to any blind boost from Daredevil's special ability. So you could potentially blind boost this card twice if you are at a low hand count, which I don't necessarily know if you're going to be able to do that all the time or really if this card is any good because this is one of four cards in your deck that has a three value boost which means if you're playing this there are 21 other cards and only three of them have a three value boost so it's a one in seven of hitting them and of course you get two chances so the odds are a little bit higher than that but you generally don't want to hit your other three value boosts because I guess you could hit the other copy of this since there's two copies, but the other three value boost card in your deck is really good. You don't want to blind boost that away. So you're not, you don't really want to go for big, big money, big damage when you're using this card. And on average, if you blind boost twice, you're going to hit two twos, let's say. So you'll deal six damage using three cards, which is like Arthur levels of horrible value. So I think you use this card to get to exhaustion to empty your deck faster because um, you have ways of like dealing with your discard pile and stuff. And so even if you discard good stuff, you can get it back. Um, but it's just like, is it worth the risk, I guess? So right now I see this as like a very mediocre card that like maybe you just blind boost if they don't block. But I don't know. How often do you play against characters that like, don't block multiple times per game um we'll see though <sighs> i'm not really sold on this card <laughs> if you couldn't tell but uh 
Could be wrong about that. Cool art. Uh, the next card, the other card with a three value boost, is the Devil of Hell's Kitchen. This is your your big money card. Uh, it's a four value attack. Looking pretty good right off the bat. This is during combat. If you have no cards in your deck, the value of this card is eight instead. Eight value attacks are huge. And unlike Equal of Grendel, where you have to spend three rage and two cards, you're spending one card and you just need an empty deck. So maybe that's why you blind boost this twice and you blind boost at every opportunity to empty your deck out so that you can land a bunch of big eight value attacks. And the best part is, normally you'd be screwed if your deck was empty, but it says after combat, shuffle this card in the top four cards of your discard pile back into your deck. So you're getting five cards back in, which is just huge levels of value. Um, Dumpster Diving Deadpool is the best card in Deadpool's deck because it lets him shuffle five cards from his discard pile back into his deck, which just, like, it keeps his exhaustion timer at bay for so much longer than other characters are able to. And this, you don't get to choose the cards. It's, it's the top four cards of your discard pile, but it also shuffles this card so that you can play it again and keep shuffling. And the best part is, the eight value part of the attack, oh, also this, <laughs> I got a big head on the body if you see what I'm doing there. I'm trying to, oh, oh. <laughs> I was just trying to line it up. It's a lot harder than it looks because everything's mirrored uh, right now for me, but <laughs> anyways, the the eight value part of this attack is conditioned to your your deck being empty, uh, but the reshuffle isn't. So you can play this when you have 15 cards left in your deck and you'll still shuffle five cards back into your deck and it shuffles this so you can play it again. There's two copies of it so you can theoretically go infinite if you just keep reshuffling them back. And I think this makes up for the fact that you'll be blind boosting a lot and reaching exhaustion a lot quicker by just removing cards from the top of your deck uh this is a card that like willow would need in order to actually be viable but she just blind boosts and doesn't get any of it back whereas you you have ways of mitigating bad luck and this card with the potential to just be a huge eight value attack is insane so against characters without cancels i think you can go infinite and that's like a somewhat scary thought but it's also really cool like i'm getting chills right now thinking about it um huge combo potential with this card uh it really it makes daredevil like unexhaustible <laughs> the next card is take a knee so daredevil never gets tired uh, and if he does he'll just take a knee it's a three value versatile probably going to use it to block you have three copies of it and it says after combat discard the top card of your deck so you're not blind boosting and it's not optional you discard it you've no choice and you recover health equal to its boost value so a lot of times this is going to heal you too so it's kind of like a five value block in that sense which is very good i guess it's bad that it's forcing you to discard a card but like we've seen you have ways of getting cards back so you don't really care uh three copies of this 17 health the fact to get more if you reshuffle this back into your deck you are one beefy boy i think this is a really solid card Next card is Son of a Boxer. You son of a boxer. Whoa, this is a family show, Baked Goods. Uh, it's a three value defense only. And it says, after combat, if you lost the combat, deal two damage to a fighter adjacent to Daredevil. So it's kind of like a balanced counterpunch. You can only play it on defense, and it triggers if you lost the combat. And again, it has an adjacency requirement, so it's probably not the best against ranged fighters, but you do have three copies of this with the chance to reshuffle it with other things i guess like that's that's what's crazy about this deck if you have good cards especially good cards at three copy it, you have way more than three copies of it because you can always reshuffle it so like you're not limited your amount of good cards isn't limited just by the way the deck is constructed because you can recycle cards and depending on the matchup you can just recycle specific cards that you need over and over again and i <sighs> Just thinking about that, I think this character is going to be very good in the meta. Um, unless your stuff gets cancelled. <laughs> but I don't even know if that will affect him too much because of the next card we're going to talk about. So this is just a, a great way to 
just like deal damage to your opponent while they'll they're trying to deal damage to you most of the good attacks in this game are at a four value so you're going to lose the combat i think more often than not with this card uh matchup depending of course like some characters like bruce lee uh will just hit you with jeets that won't hit over your three value defense but i guess if they're not dealing damage to you you don't get to deal damage back but i think that's fine and with your ways to recover health i guess you don't really care if you're losing the combat but we'll see like I said, it uh, has an adjacency requirement, so it will not be good necessarily against ranged characters or bullseye, uh, <laughs> but uh, still really solid in a lot of matchups. The next card is Breather. So this is another way to get cards back that isn't cancelable or attached to Devil of Hell's Kitchen. Uh, you choose an attack, defense, or versatile card from your discard pile, so the order doesn't matter, and return it to your hand. So it goes back to your hand. It doesn't get shoveled into your deck. Notice that it doesn't say scheme. You can't choose a scheme with this card because if you could, you could just play breather, get back a breather, play breather, get back a breather, and you just would you wouldn't have to play the game. You could just cycle breathers on your turn and make your opponent come to you and do things. That would be completely horrible to play against. And I'm glad that they made that phrasing on the card because. Then you would have like an infinite exhaustion timer. Just keep playing schemes on your turn that recycle schemes to get back the schemes. And that would be bad. That would be bad. <laughs> and they didn't do that because Restoration Games is smart and they know what they're doing. So if your Devil of Hell's Kitchen gets fainted, you can just breathe it back. And most characters only have three cancels, three faints. So you basically have two plus three you have five chances to get this card off and after that you're just off to the races and should be able to do it forever <laughs> if you get uh, the good reshuffle so i don't know how certain characters will beat daredevil in exhaustion because they just won't so i think a lot of the time you're gonna have to just bum rush him down and try to aggress him and use his lack of card draw and just like his relatively low block values because he really only blocks for three but the problem is he heals on this one and he deals you damage back on this one so killing him quickly might even be hard too <laughs> we'll see through adversity is the next scheme uh, and it says move daredevil up to four spaces he may move through opposing fighters deal one damage to each opposing fighter daredevil moves through so it's kind of like stallion charge but instead of five spaces it's four and instead of being on a cancelable card it's on a scheme which is more guaranteed and you have three copies of this so i think anyone with one health sidekicks is just going to get wrecked by this card pretty quickly um you can't cycle it back with breather but i think that's okay um and it's just nice ping damage. So in theory, like Daredevil should be able to do relatively well against like Wukong, Drac, Ingen, Electra, even though some of those characters, like Ingen, have range and traps to kind of keep you at bay. And like Wukong has um, some good defenses that will stop you from dealing damage, even if you can get to him. But like some of the other one health sidekicks like Robin and Medusa, maybe Daredevil has good matchups into them because of this card. Uh, I think this is really good for a solo melee character to have because it can help him not have to just churn through enemy sidekicks for the entire game. Um, does that make him too strong? <laughs> I don't know. I need to test him more. Uh, right now he's looking really, really good. The next card is Grappling Hook. It's a three value versatile that says after combat move daredevil up to two spaces so i guess it's nice that he has movement effects on his cards um because like his other block cards um don't have anything and like he doesn't have skirmish um this card is just a little mediocre but it's necessary because as you can see a lot of the other cards except this one maybe um are really really good and have really powerful effects so having kind of like a tamer effect i think is fine and it's actually i think it's somewhat to do with like inset balance because if bullseye is attacking you from five spaces away you can move daredevil two spaces when you play that on defense and then maneuver up to him with your move three and be able to hit him um, without having to boost your maneuver decent well you do have three copies of this card which i think like 
would you rather have a third copy of this? Yes. <laughs> but like you have three copies of actually almost every single card in this deck except for these two. So I guess you can't really complain about that. Uh, and the last card is Faint, of course, uh, which you also have three copies of. So you, you actually have three copies of everything except for these two. Uh, so this is just another block option. As you can see, uh, you don't really have that many um, although I guess you have 12 total. So 12 of your 22 cards are black cards uh, and they're capped out at three, except this deals damage back. Remember this cancels and this heals you, this moves you. So that's actually like a semi-decent block package because um, you're, you're getting like good effects whenever you're blocking, despite the fact that you're not really blocking for that much, but just because of all your recursion and your healing, um, and your damage, you should be able to close out games despite you probably getting pounded or taking damage every time you get attacked. Uh, I just think it's fine because you can survive into the late game longer than almost any other character can. Um, you can have a bunch of feints with breather, so certain characters that rely on their effects like Sinbad or Little Red, you can probably beat pretty handedly. Um, so right now I'm struggling to think of who Daredevil doesn't beat. Uh, and I think that might be only like Sherlock and Bigfoot, just because they have so many cancels. And uh, any character with hand disruption might be able to screw Daredevil over because you can just pluck his recursion cards away. And then he's forced to spend his recursion getting his recursion back. And that means he's not uh, getting his like block cards that keep him alive back or uh, things like that. So uh, do you use the ability? I don't know. <laughs> uh, in the great words of Rodney Smith, um, I'll leave you to discover that on your own. And maybe you can tell me in the comments of this video um, how exactly it is you play Daredevil because I see a ton of potential here. He has so many good cards. Um, despite there only being eight unique ones, uh, this is just a really interesting package. And if I wasn't so enthralled by Bullseye, I think Daredevil would be my favorite of the set. Um, so far, there's a really interesting set. I've been thoroughly impressed by the new Marvel stuff. Um, all the characters are like good. <laughs> they're like, their floor is like high C tier, low B tier. Um, like they're all decent from what we've seen from uh, Redemption Row and Hell's Kitchen. So uh, I am very excited to see what the meta looks like next because I think all six of these characters will be huge shakeups. So um, those are my first impressions on Daredevil and in total the new Hell's Kitchen Marvel and Match set. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. If I got something completely spot on, if I got something completely wrong, um, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about it. And I guess that's uh, that's it for this this video and this mini series. We'll be back uh, probably when the new Jurassic Park set comes out. I'll give you my first impressions on those after getting some plays, but um, they haven't even released the pre-orders for that yet, so that's going to be in a couple months down the road. Uh, sorry, these videos took a little bit to get out. Um, I didn't uh, really have a good opportunity to play around with these characters that much until the Winter of Champions tournament concluded, but. <sighs> they're here now so hope you enjoy um so thank you so much for watching that's all i got for you today um as always like subscribe and yay